It's looking at the whole thing and a different angle of it. And, and, and sometimes when we read the Word, we only look at it one way. And we come across these paths in our life and we only look at it one way. And we don't understand, well, why does God want this? And I want, you know, go this way. And we, we struggle with that. Well, sometimes we need to look at the big picture. And we look at it, you know, the whole thing and at a different angle to see, you know, what God wants for us. Because the, the whole idea here is found in 1 Samuel. That's where we all started in chapter 2, verse 30. It says, those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me, I will disdain. And God wants us to honor him. And I think we truly want to honor him, but we don't do that all the time. You remember the childhood prayer before a meal? Everybody probably said this prayer one time or heard it at one time in their life. God is great. God is good. Let us thank Him for our food. Amen. By His hands we are all fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. How many have heard that before? Amen. How many have prayed that before? How many believe that today? Amen. Why not? Why not? Well, if you believe that today, and you believe God is good, Always. Always. This means you will always meet your genuine, not perceived needs. And I'm going to take you through some, some scripture this morning just to give, you, give some weight to the word. And if that's, if that's your prayer, that's what you really believe, then this is the promises of God by what you're praying. In Philippians 4.19 it says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. According to his riches. Boy, I kept reading that, his riches. So many of us want our own riches, huh? Think about it. the creator of the universe wants you to have his riches. Amen. Wow. He has more than what I could ever count. This also means that he'll always forgive your sin. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. It means he can never stop loving you. Jeremiah 31 13 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I think that's hard sometimes for some of us to understand that. You know, no matter what we've done, no matter how many times we've done it, He still loves you. And His heart yearns for you to love Him back and to honor Him. This means His strength and His grace are always sufficient for you. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, Amen. for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in weakness. What are those words? What are those words resonate in your mind when you hear that? For my strength is made perfect in weakness. When I hear those words, it reminds me that I can't do it in my own strength. And it seems like at my weakest times is the times that I grow the most because I'm relying on Him more. And His grace is sufficient. No matter what you're going through, hold on to Him. It is sufficient. That's how you give weight to the Word. It means you can count on Him to do what He promised. In Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not human, that He should, not, that he should lie, not a human being, that He should change His mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Have you read the word? If you read it, you understand what that says. Because you've read the Old Testament, read the New Testament, you see how the promises have, 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 have come, have come to, 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 to play. You, you, you know it. You've seen it. You've heard it. It means you've no need to fear. In Joshua 1, 9 it says, I have commanded you by strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. 
Don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Wow. So many times, you know, in life we go through, we go through things. I was crying out to him this week when I wasn't feeling good. You know, I didn't get as better as fast as I wanted to, but you know what? One thing I was just sure that he was there. And what a comforting time to know that he's there. And then get to get a call or a text or a message from you guys all week. I didn't get maybe not got back to you, but I heard those words. And those words of encouragement. And God used you to encourage me. And we need to do that in our lives. That gives weight to the word. And we can hold on to it. So if you believe this morning that God is always good, it means what you're going to do is reject your own thinking and give weight to his word. There's a quote by A.W. Tozer. It says, With the goodness of God to desire our highest welfare, the wisdom of God to plan it, and the power of God to achieve it, what do we lack? Surely we are the most favored of all creatures. What more do we need? And the promises and the, and the, and the encouragement and the, the answers are all found here. If we give weight to it, if we trust it, if we honor it, all of it. So I want to go over to Isaiah, chapter 55. And we gave some weight to the word this morning. We want to look at what happens when we be, really begin to do that in our lives. And we're in Isaiah 55, chapter, verse 7 through 13. Let me read those words for you. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he is freely pardoned. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow came down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sour and bread for the eater. So, it may, so my word that goes out of my mouth it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow, it will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars and myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown. For an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. See, sometimes what we need to do is we, when you give weight to the word, we abandon our own reasoning. Is that hard to do sometimes? Yeah. Abandon your own reasoning. You know, here you have it, you, you, you come across and you know, you know what you should do, and you start, your mind starts working. I'm learning how your mind's working, so be careful. Okay. <laughs> you know, and your mind's working there, and all of a sudden you start reasoning. And what Isaiah is saying here in, in, in verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You need to abandon those thoughts right away and get rid of them. And establish the thoughts that God has for you. In the second part of chapter, verse 7, it says, And let him return unto the Lord. So return and establish your thoughts for the Lord. But how do you reason? What do you do when you reason? Do you look at the big picture of things, or do you just look at what's happening now with, with you? And there's so many scenarios that, that this plays into in our, in our lives. And it might come in just into something that, that, that's said to you. And it's said to you, and it kind of sparks a little interest, and you're like, hmm, what should I do with this? Boy, I'd love to share this with somebody, because this is really good. See, you're starting to reason in your mind. Okay? You're starting to reason in your mind, and you're starting to think, oh my gosh, you know, and you're using your own thoughts and your own judgment. But on the other half of your mind, your God's telling you, no, I don't think so. 
You know, remember you put weight into the word and it says, look unto God for the word, look unto him for the things. So what do you do? And that's even, that's only one little thing there. We're, we're not talking about something big here. We're not talking about someone said something to you. It happened to me, happened to me uh, yesterday. Somebody called me and what they said, I, I just wanted just to, to tell them a few things. And I thought, you know, that's not what, what I should do right now. I need to hold on to that right now. I don't know why. Drive me crazy because I want to say something, but I can't. <laughs> but I'm trying to abandon my own reasoning, my own thoughts, and putting weight into the word. Yeah. And maybe it's something that you're supposed to be doing. And you keep reasoning and don't abandon that reasoning and go the way God wants you to go. To so return to the word and establish his thoughts. It says, not, and let him return unto the Lord. Not only do we forsake our way and return to God's way, but also we must forsake the thinking that produced our error. Get rid of it. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Wow. What would happen if the church got a hold of that verse? <laughs> it would be a new church. It would be a new church. We demolish arguments at every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. All those thoughts will just get captive and we're making them, letting them look like the grace one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little like heaven to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but man, we have the capability of doing that now if we put weight in the word and we begin to honor God. Mm -hmm. Think of some situations where this might come into play in our own lives. Again, I have down in my notes gossip, decisions. Maybe there's somebody who makes you uneasy. You know, there's some of those, those things that happen. Maybe decisions that are made not the way that you think they might need to go. Thirdly, we experience God's mercy and forgiveness. It goes on in Isaiah to say, and we will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon you. He's going to forgive you. When you, when, you, when you get rid of your own reason, your own thoughts, and you put, the, you put your honor in the word and, and follow what this says, He's going to forgive those things, and you can, you can move on. And the word abundantly means to multiply. And God's desire is to keep abundant mercy upon his children. He wants to multiply your blessings when you're honoring him. And we accept God's ways at the expense of our own. This is when we put weight to the word. When our ways are incompatible, we must accept his and reject ours. But what do we try to do? We try to mix them together, don't we? It's like oil and water. We're trying to do that. You know, I hate those salad dressings, you know, where they don't have a really good top on it to shake. You can never get a good dose of it all. You either get oil or you get the vinegar part of it. And I think of that when I think of when we try to mix God's word with and his ways with our own ways. That's what, that's what we get, that ugly mixture of it. Why don't we set that aside? And just go his way. You ever thought about that? Just set your own thoughts and reasons and ways aside and just go his way. Seems simple, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Just to stop and just, just go his way. Hmm. Well, let me show you why it's a good reason to do that. In verse 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. He doesn't think the way we think. He sees the big picture. He, he knows all and sees all. He's got all the angles. He sees it different. He's got it all different ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my way. So, you know, what we would think would work, maybe, you know, we're not, we don't have, I, I don't know. How many believe?
believe they're the smartest man or woman, uh, even here in church. <laughs> so I'm holding on to his thoughts and his ways. Amen. He says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He's got it all figured out for us. He loves you so much. And he's giving you the instruction book. And he's giving you the, the, the ways, the encouragement, the, the reasons, the, 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 the examples. He's giving you all in the Word. Amen. Amen. All of it's there. If we just take time and study it and look at it and and reason with it, and turn it upside down, and, yeah. and, and challenge it. Right. I'm, I, I have a hard time challenging you, but I'm learning to challenge you. See, because generally our, our ways, and our speaking, and all things we do are contrary to God's ways, and they're incompatible. We must accept, we must accept one to be true and reject the other to be false. Remember, to try to mix your thinking and God's thinking is the most destructive path. In James 1.8 it says, A double-minded man is unstable in all ways. So I must honor God by believing His Word and giving weight to it. When we give weight to the Word, we honor the One who gave it to us. Go over to the New Testament. Go over to Luke. I want to share one last passage before we close this morning. It's found in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. It's familiar to, to a lot of you, but I want you to hear these words this morning. And I want you to think about your own foundation. And what, are you, what are you putting your most weight in this morning? <laughs> He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house and could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice... It's like a man who built a house on the ground without foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and destruction was complete. Where is your house built? Where are you putting all your weight on this morning? And my prayer is this morning is that you just open your heart just a little bit more this morning, right? And allow some of God's word, His grace, and His love, and His 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 faithfulness just to seep into you just a little bit, and to hold on to even just that little bit is way better than all that junk you got going on. In Isaiah thirty-three six, it says, "He will be the sure foundation for your times." A rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. And the fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. And it doesn't mean we need to fear the Lord. What that means is we just need to be in awe of who He is. And His Word. And to hold on to those things in our own life. And that's what God wants from us this morning. Amen. He wants you just to give way to His Word. To, to stop playing games with this. To stop playing games with it. To know that it's true and to follow it. And, and to quit, you know, quit messing around. Come on. You know, I, 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 sometimes we can get theological and we can throw all these verses at you, but you know what? It, it, it comes down to, I, I think Pastor Tony said to me the other day, recently, we just need to do it. Amen. Right? And believe in it. And hold on to it and live it. Try that for a while. If you haven't tried it, read one, one, one verse a day. 
I send you a verse on Twitter almost every day. Last week I did because I was sick, but every day I send you a verse on Twitter. You just read that one. <laughs> That's going to open that heart just a little bit more mm -hmm. until you can see that there is weight in this word. And for you young people, I know sometimes you think, well, eh, that's old people stuff, and you know, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't need to read that right now. But I would love for you guys to, to, to learn the lessons that we had to go through and learn at this age, and to, and to enjoy life the way God has a plan for you at, at, at this year. But I mean, this morning, we'll give weight to the word this morning. Amen. Amen. Honor him. We, have a, we have a miracle here this morning. And we've been praying for this miracle, and somebody asked me about this miracle this morning. I'm going to bring that miracle down here this morning. Jeff, Jeff Anderson is here in church this morning. Everyone 
if you didn't already know, on Thursday, Hank celebrated 10 years of sobriety. Amen. Yeah. 